A new discovery has just been made close to Antarctica, and it's got people questioning what it is and how long it's been there. Four large pyramids can be seen close to Antarctica, with many being confused saying that they look very similar to the large pyramids found in Egypt, further saying they could have been placed here by ancient civilizations. Pyramid-like structures are certainly nothing new, with some of the oldest pyramids on our planet being found in Egypt, and being dated to over 4,000 years old. However, this date has been disputed by many, saying that advanced civilizations may have built these giant structures, and that it was the Egyptians who found them. One such place that backs up this theory is that of Teotihuacan, with historians saying that Teotihuacan is older than the Aztec people, and that it's not known which culture or civilization created Teotihuacan. The same theory is being applied to these mysterious structures, with people saying they don't look like mountains or anything natural, saying that you can see they look like they've been placed in a straight line. When the images were shared to groups online who study ancient structures and artifacts, even they were confused about what had been discovered, with various members saying that these are some of the best images of underwater pyramids that they've seen. One person said the following, some of the underwater pyramids that have been presented in the past don't look anything like pyramids, and just look like natural underwater features that are in the shape of a pyramid. The fact that this image looks similar to the pyramids in Egypt when viewed from above is certainly interesting. This doesn't mean that something otherworldly created them, but it could certainly mean that there's a lost civilization close by, and that in itself is incredibly interesting. End quote. Taking measurements will show you that these four structures measure 7,108 meters, or 23,320 feet. Scientists and historians have said that Antarctica does not, and has never had any civilizations inhabit there. Yet when these types of discoveries are made, it causes people to question this idea. Another person said the following, We should be following the facts and not just statements. The fact is that there are four large structures that look like pyramids just outside of Antarctica, so what we should be doing is sending a team there to go and investigate if it's anything of interest. Even if it turns out to be nothing, at least we'll have an answer. These days people will say things like they're not pyramids, because scientists say that no one has ever lived there before, but that statement only works all the time that no discoveries are being made. Every year we are finding out more and more things about Antarctica, and we shouldn't be afraid of going against the grain when interesting discoveries are being made. End quote. This is a fair statement as in the past many scientists have been proven wrong. One of these examples is that of the coelacanth. This creature was swimming around in our oceans hundreds of millions of years ago, and scientists said they became extinct around 80 million years ago. But in 1938, a living coelacanth was discovered in the Indian Ocean, near the southern coast of Africa. Incredibly, these creatures have been living since the time of the dinosaurs. With this much evidence gathered by the scientific community, it's no surprise then that it appears there are large tales involving the existence of real-life encounters with ancient creatures, and these have continued into the modern day. Is creatures like the coelacanth that prove that scientists can be wrong, and the same applies with these kinds of structures. Unless we've gone there and investigated it, we can't say for sure that these aren't pyramids. This isn't the only pyramid-like structure that's been found underwater. Pauline Zalitsky, a marine engineer and her husband own a company based in Canada, called Advanced Digital Communications. They were working on a survey mission in conjunction with the Cuban government of the coast of Cuba. Advanced Digital Communications were one of the four firms working in venture with Fidel Castro's government, and this was to explore Cuban waters. Their primary interest was finding treasure shipwrecks from the Spanish colonial era. The team was using heavily advanced equipment to scan the area, when they noticed these bizarre structures. Some of these structures were found with smooth blocks in geometric shapes. Other blocks appear to be built into pyramid shapes. 
others were completely circular. Months later, they returned to the site with another geologist. Knowing what they would find in the area, they returned with the appropriate technology to examine and record the structures. The large blocks seemed to resemble granite. The main piece of this is so confusing that it would have taken around 50,000 years for such structures to have sunk into their depths. The catch is that 50,000 years ago, there was not the architectural capacity in any of the cultures we are aware of of that time, and that they wouldn't have been able to build such complex things. Despite such a media flurry, this story was soon buried and the sites left unresearched. The quick dismissal of the story has led some to question on whether or not there has been suppression of information regarding the finding. Whether the leads went cold, or that this is something that we were not meant to find, we might never know. It's discoveries like these that have caused some to say this is a perfect example of scientists ignoring their facts, and going with the narrative rather than doing genuine investigations. As of 2018, the Ocean Service has said that over 80% of our oceans are unexplored. Although many have said that space is one of the last unexplored frontiers, the argument could also be made that our oceans make that list. After all, we've done a great job at mapping hard-to-reach regions on our planet, but haven't yet managed to research certain regions of our oceans. In recent years, there's been various individuals who have said they've time-travelled. Time travel has been an obsession for many. Everyone from scientists to filmmakers have wondered if it was possible, and what it would look like if it really happened. Even the physicist Stephen Hawking argued that time travel was something we couldn't rule out. Although no concrete evidence has been found to prove that time travel is possible, many experts are still optimistic, and will likely remain this way until proven otherwise. A handful of people have come forward in recent times with their stories of travelling in time, and one of these was detailed by a man from Siberia who claimed he travelled to the year 4040. The unnamed man said he worked in a physics lab, where he was part of a team who worked to build a time machine. He said that the team was successful in building the time machine, but said he has to be careful not to reveal too many details. He said that once the project was complete, he was one of the first people to test it. He said he was able to travel to the year 4040, and that it had been pretty much taken over by robots. He detailed that much of the human population had been wiped out by the machines, and that the majority of this was done in 2458. This was when humans had made contact with an advanced civilization, after they got a response to one of their signals. The scientists went on to say these aliens easily outlived humans, being able to live to around 450 years on average. However, he said that these beings detailed that their species had just been involved in a massive war, one that wiped out the majority of their kind. Due to this, they searched the stars in order to find a place to colonise. The physicists said they tracked a signal that was sent out by Earth, and so made their way towards the planet. The scientists said that after these aliens arrived, everything rapidly improved for humans. Healthcare improved meaning humans were overall more healthy, and were able to live longer, and everyday life was easier on the human soul. But in 3213, humans and the aliens decided to collaborate, and create a kind of superintelligence. He said that they created a huge computer that was around half the size of Europe. This computer was responsible for controlling every one of these robots. The scientists said though this computer outsmarted both humans and aliens, and when they were least expecting it turned on both their creators, telling the robots that the humans and the aliens were the enemy and that they needed to be destroyed. His story ends by saying that by the year 4040 pretty much everything on earth was in ruins. Much of the population had been taken up by these super intelligent robots, and that it looked like nothing would return back to normal. The scientist said that he and his team then locked away the device that allowed them to travel to this time, and said that people need to take artificial intelligence more seriously, 
noted that we've created our own downfall, and it's only a matter of time before they strike. These kinds of stories make for interesting reads, but as scientists and researchers have pointed out there's no proof that they actually happened. They've never been contacted by Russian officials saying that they've created a time machine, nor has evidence been presented to back up what they're saying. This leads many to believe that they're just stories. Regardless, there's still some that believe they're real, and that we should listen instead of just writing them off. Interestingly, in some cases we have been able to put a face to those who've claimed time travel is real, and one of these individuals who's been vocal about time travel is that of Ron Mallet. An astrophysicist named Ron Mallet has dedicated a large portion of his life to studying the possibility of time travel. His interest in time travel began when he was 10 years old, and his father passed away after suffering from a heart attack. A year after his father's death, Mallet discovered the book The Time Traveller by H.G. Wells, and his life was changed forever. After becoming a professor at the University of Connecticut, Mallet began sharing his ideas of time travel, and realised that many people were just as curious about the idea. This motivated him to continue his research. Mallet has determined several scientific equations and principles, and he now believes that not only is it possible to travel back in time, but he could even build a time machine to make it happen. According to a theory by Albert Einstein, objects that are large can bend space and time, and time goes slower as gravity gets stronger. Based on this theory, Mallet believes that you can do more than just bend space, but that you can twist it. He believes that anything that can be done to space can be done to time as well. Mallet has come up with a theory, claiming that time can be twisted into a loop that would make time travel possible. He built his own prototype that shows how one could use lasers to achieve success. Mallet has said that studying ring lasers and their effects on gravity could help him figure out how to make a time machine based on a light that circulates. This light beam would potentially twist time and space, and allow someone to travel to the past. Mallet also believes that if this light is twisted in just the right way, travelling to the future could be possible as well. Mallet's peers have been hesitant about his theories, and find it hard to believe he will achieve his goals. An astrophysicist named Paul Stutter believes there's too many flaws in Mallet's theory, and that it doesn't seem practical. Other scientists believe that even though Mallet's ideas aren't very practical, experimenting with them may be worthwhile. Mallet admits that his theory has its flaws, and that it doesn't seem achievable at this moment. He has acknowledged the fact that time travel likely won't be possible in his lifetime, but he is trying to raise money to perform experiments. Regardless of the negative opinions of others, Mallet remains optimistic. He is glad that his work will contribute to the study of time travel, and he considers it a great tribute to his father. So what do you make of these interesting time travel stories? Do you think that anyone has ever been forward or backwards in time? Or do you think these are just stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.